the side molding and the front molding as well as the front filler piece. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clamp one side molding piece perfectly flush so the bottom of the miter needs to be perfectly flush with the edge of the case. Then you're gonna take your front molding piece, line it up, you have a perfectly closed miter on this side, we're gonna come to the other side, mark a line here, so that's the very bottom end of the miter that we need to cut to make it fit. And then you're going to carry that line across the edge and go to the radial chop saw and cut that down. Now, other steps that we're going to do is we're going to also router a profile on the edge and we're going to skip the scroll work on this piece. All right, so let's go cut to final size and then we're going to router all three pieces and then work on the filler piece. So with that said, let's get to it. So what I did was I dry clamped both my side molding pieces to their final positions. And then I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my molding, front molding, and I'm gonna line it up again. So I cut it to close to the line that I had drawn. And I'm gonna see how well it fits. Now, as you can see, there's a gap that pushed down on this side over here. There's a gap. And what this tells me is that the length of the front molding is bigger than the opening we have here. So to close this gap, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the radial chop saw and we're going to bump and shave this until this gap, until this gap disappears. So with that said, let's go do it. Now that gap is closed and the front molding is a perfect fit now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a router design on the top edge and then work on the front filler piece. Now that we're at the router table, Let's go over a few things real quick. So currently in the table, we have a half inch round over bit, which can cut either this design or this design here. Now, the way you get the difference is either you run your board face down on the table to create this profile, or you run it edge down to cut this profile, all right? Just like the jointer, you want to think about this way, is you're always squeezing from right to left as you're going across the piece, right? Now, the order you want to feed your molding is crucial. So if you don't do it on the same edge, you're going to have either two lefts or two rights. So the easiest way I do it is I put it together, like I did on my box, with the edge that I want facing up, lay it flat and that's the order that I want to feed it in. So this one will go miter first, this one will go back first, and the front molding will go in either direction, whatever one matches your scroll. So if you have a scroll design, you want the scroll design facing towards you. If you put the, right, the router profile on the scroll side, you'll have to start again. So again, the non-scroll designs edge is going to go against the fence. So with that said, let's make some chips. So one good thing to practice too, by the way, this is why at this station we have a lot of pine, is you want to do a test cut before you cut your piece. If you don't like the design, what you can do is you can either lower it so that you get just a rounded edge, or you can raise it so that the round over bit creates a lip like this. We're going for the standard cut, so we're going to do the molding with the faces against the table, so we get this profile here.
looks good. So now we'll make our actual cuts. ready to go. What I'm going to do is for the front filler, I'm going to pocket hole so that I can hold it inside my frame. I mean my frame, my case. So you're going to do two pocket holes on the ends of your pieces that are about a half an inch up from either edge. And then from the end grain, we're going to measure in two inches, then four inches for the upward pocket holes, right? When I'm using this machine, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut closer so you can see what I'm doing. So on the pocket hole machine, what I'm doing is I'm lining up my marks with this center cut here. So once I have it lined up, I'll clamp it down, all right? Once that's set, All I have to do is turn on the machine, press forward to pocket hole, and pull rearward to pilot hole. So watch. And there we go. All right, so we're gonna need to do the rest of those marks in order to secure the front filler, all right? Once that's done, we're also going to pilot a hole in countersink so that we can screw our front molder gun. So let's make that happen. at the drill press what I've done is I put three hole marks on my front filler so the one in between these two pocket holes on the end one in the middle and one on the opposite end all right so what I'm gonna do now is called a pilot hole I'm gonna drill straight through each of those marks so that I can screw my front face onto my my front molding onto my case. There we go. And then the countersink, we're going to take our cordless drill and our countersink bit, line it up with our pilot hole. And we're going to drill until the head of our screw 
that flat part goes below the surface. Perfect. Perfect. And then. Perfect. So now the front filler is ready to be glued and screwed into our case. So let's get to it. Now what I'm gonna do, take my glue bottle and I'm going to spread glue across the end grain and the top edge grain and the opposite end grain. Put my front filler into my project. All right, and I'm gonna use bar clamps to hold it in place while I screw it. All right, this shouldn't sit free without clamps before you screw it in, because it can shift. And if you have it chipped too much on either end, it could push your molding off your project. So what I'm gonna do, spread some glue. There we go. Now we're ready to screw on the other side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use a cordless drill instead of an impactor. Because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to by accidentally split the side grain of my piece. Right? Well, one thing I'm gonna do real quick before I go any farther, I'm gonna just make sure that my face, my front filler is not sticking out in front. So Make any last adjustments now. Now that that's set, I'm going to turn the drill transmission to the screw function, and I'm going to come down from the max torque down to about 13. The right? reason why is, again, I don't want to strip the head of the screw while I'm doing this, I'd rather the transmission spin, all right, and then go up in torques to drive the screw in. So I'm gonna stay at 13, put it in the forward function, come over top of my screw, drive down, and there we go. So once I do one on one side, I'm gonna hop to the other, just so it doesn't spin out of alignment. So again, last time to check, for any misalignment. Now with pocket holes, you screws, you can, what we call, populate them. <clears throat> so what you do is you press the screw until the thread catches, so it'll hold it in place. So all you have to do is come from the side, and then drive it in. Ready to drill the holes for the side skirts, countersink, and then mount the molding on. So with that said, we're gonna finish this part up next time. So with that said, have a great day.